Gambling took over for me when it was all I could think about. Everything I did with work, that was just the fill in time so I could gamble again. Very lucky the way I grew up, um, solid household, and then uh, attended uh, primary school and high school both in Geelong, and then I was fortunate enough to get drafted where I embarked on an 11 year AFL career. Gambling probably became a bigger part of my life after I was drafted. A lot of my friends went off to uni or started an apprenticeship and a lot of their days were taken up by their schoolwork or, you know, you know, work during the day where I was training in the morning and have a few hours off in the afternoon. And so when I had a bit more money and uh, a lot more time off, that was the probably the time where gambling started to you know, be my main outlet. I started thinking about it every every single day. Everything I did was all to bet more. I'd always find a way to uh, go and be by myself for 10 minutes and watch a couple races. So I'd say, oh, I need to go to the toilet or I'm gonna go out to the car. Just that manipulation of you know the people around you to sort of get what you want was is the, probably the thing I look back on now and um, with the most regret. I didn't stop because I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to stop gambling. It was you know, my, pretty much everything in my life at that stage, everything that made me happy and made me, you know, want to keep working for the next hour or so. It was just the environment I created for myself. I never knew I had a problem until I was hit up about it. Um, I was by a person at the Geelong Football Club who was really upfront with me and very honest with me about what he'd heard um, about me and my gambling habits. And when I got confronted, I denied it. I said, I'm in control, I've got no issues, but really behind closed doors, I was running out of money. I was putting you know, tens of thousands of dollars through a week. You know, I wasn't able to pay the mortgage bill. I wasn't able to pay my car insurance and stuff like that. But in my head, I just said, oh, I just need a win to, to just pay that bill and then I'm okay for another month. Yeah, it was until that conversation, I just, uh, I would have kept lying to myself, but it was a real moment of realization for me that I needed help. From that moment on, you know, I, I've been lucky that I've had really good support around me, but it wasn't just the, the support. I had to have a mindset um, change where I you know, had to blow up pretty much my whole life and leave the state and you know, get into a new environment in Brisbane. And so there was no more going to TABs. There's no more going to pubs where I had big wins. I started talking to other people who had um, gambling addictions. I spoke to everyone I knew because I knew if I spoke to enough people about it, then I'd be accountable to a lot more people. Me right now is probably the best I've ever been. I'm six and a half years uh, down the track and you know I think I've got enough things in in place that I'll never gamble again and I'm very very confident in that. What I'd say to someone who's struggling with gambling is just talk to people about it. I know it gets better and everyone I've spoken to about their gambling addiction or their gambling struggles I know that the more they're spoken about it to the more people that they've became more comfortable with it and then being able to get more help. It doesn't matter if you know, you're a baker or you drive a truck or you, know, you work at your, your local supermarket or you're playing you know, top level sport in the biggest sport in Australia. Gambling addiction does not discriminate at all. But I also want to show that you know, there's, a, there's a sense of optimism out there and you can actually you know, beat this thing and there is a, there's another life outside of a gambling addiction. Your life doesn't have to just revolve around gambling.